Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Miss Kaylee. I'm back for yet another fascinating day of social studies. Um, we're going to continue in this whole process of inquiry. And where you started before was you've looked at open and closed questions. You've categorized questions by their disciplinary strands. And some of you still may be a little muddy on that. And that's OK for now. We're kind of trying to get an idea of where you are. So our next step in that process is going to be to see if we can figure out how an author arrived at a claim. And you might be like, well, why are we doing that? Well, think about open and closed questions, categorizing, looking at brainstorming of questions. All of that leads us to a spot where we can make a claim or create an argument. So that's why we're here today. And we're going to do a brief activity just to see if you can figure out how an author got to a specific claim. Before you do anything, stop and go to Google Classroom to today's assignment and open this right this article right here it says orange juneteenth new zella article i'm going to give you a couple of seconds to do that or you can pause me all right once you get there your screen should look like mine So our goal today, like I said, is to build an understanding of how an author gets to a claim. A claim, all it is, is a statement based on evidence, multiple sources, and not all claims are created equal. Some of them are very one-sided. Some of them are very balanced and use multiple sources. We will go through the whole year looking at claims. So today, I'm not going to have you actually do the highlighting. I've done it for you. Um, pink will be related information. So related information will be things that are related to the topic, like maybe dates, um, maybe who was involved, but maybe they don't really support the argument um, very clearly. They're background information that helps us understand the context, but not necessarily directly relevant to the argument. Relevant information, however, um, is evidence that actually helps support your claim or an author's claim. So it's directly related to the point your author's trying to make, all right? Comments are little spots where we're going to stop and actually look at content area vocabulary to make sure that you understand the words we're reading, okay? So I've already done that, and I'm just going to think aloud. So what I'm going to ask you to do is read with me and follow with me. All right, so I want your eyes right here on the words, read the author's claim. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to walk through why I highlighted certain things, why I put in comments, etc. So in comments, it says for every word that is bold, underlined, and italicized, I'm supposed to put in my understanding of that word. Today, I'm doing it for you. Next time, you'll do it yourself, okay? All right. Juneteenth should be declared a national holiday similar to the 4th of July, Labor, and Memorial Day, because it marks the day that all slaves in the United States knew they were free and that the Emancipation Proclamation would be followed. Okay, this author clearly thinks that this thing called Juneteenth should be a national holiday. Let's see if we can figure out why. Juneteenth celebrations commemorate final end to slavery. Sounds important. By the Washington Post, published in 2020. More than 250,000 black people were enslaved in Texas in 1865. They did not know they had been freed. It took a long time for them to hear about their freedom. Slavery is an awful part of U.S. history. Millions of black Ameri Americans were enslaved. They were forced to do whatever their enslaver wanted. Abraham Lincoln was president during the Civil War. It went on from 1861 to 1865. Lincoln gave the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. It freed enslaved people in the Confederate states. During the Civil War, the Southern states were called the Confederacy. So we're going to stop there. Remember, pink is related. Helpful to know, but maybe not really directly related to this argument that Juneteenth should be a national holiday. So 250,000 black people were enslaved in Texas. It is related. But the fact that millions of black Americans were enslaved, that speaks to the whole country. If you're going to have a national holiday, this feels like a good argument. So the 250 is pink and the millions is yellow. 
Also important, but just related, Abraham Lincoln was president. Um, the Civil War lasted from 1861 to, 60, to 65, and that he wrote this thing called the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, I can look right here for context. So what I did was, when it's bold, underlined, and italicized, I'm supposed to insert a comment. So I did. For enslaved, that means holding people against their will. And for Emancipation Proclamation, that means all, person held, all persons held in rebellious states shall be set free, right, to emancipate. All right, let's keep going. The Confederacy was formed by southern states that broke away from the United States. They separated from the North after the United States outlawed slavery. They wanted to be able to keep enslaving people. Gordon Granger was a leader from the North. It was called the Union. On June 19, 1865, Granger read an order in Galveston, Texas. It said, all slaves are free. Sounds like a big deal. Black people who heard it began to celebrate. They sang and shouted. Okay, so Confederacy. It tells me right here, the southern states were called the Confederacy, and they were formed because they broke away. So, in my comment, I put southern states that broke away. Continuing on, I highlighted in yellow as relevant, important information. Juneteenth means June the 19th. So, this is where it gets its name. June the 19th, 1865, this guy named Granger comes to Texas in Galveston and says, you guys are actually free, even though Lincoln had said two years before they were free. The slaves didn't know. So this was the last state, Texas, to actually announce that slaves were free. Okay, that seems important. If you want Juneteenth to be a national holiday, the day in which it was announced that the slaves were free would be important. Let's keep going. Should be at the word Texas. I'll give you a second to get there. Texas slow to free slaves. Other enslaved people had been freed earlier. Enslavers in Texas did not follow Lincoln's order in 1863. So enslaved people there had waited more than two years. They finally got their freedom on June 19, 1865. Since then, African Americans have had a holiday on that day called Juneteenth. It combines the word June with 19th. Celebrations were planned for this year. Okay, so related that Texas did not follow Lincoln's orders, um, but still again, really connected or relevant is they finally got their freedom on June 19th, 1865. That's the big day, right? Also related is that many African Americans have a holiday already called Juneteenth, but it's not a national holiday. And that celebrations are planned for this year. Let's keep going. Some people upset about Trump's plan. President Donald Trump said that he planned to hold rallies again. They are to help him run for president. The first rally was set for Tulsa, Oklahoma on June 19th. This is the day of Juneteenth. All right, so I can guess this is related and probably makes people pretty unhappy given that the day is supposed to be about the end of slavery. That's my guess. Some people were upset by Trump's plan. They do not think he should meet in Tulsa on that day. Tulsa had a terrible event in 1921. It was called the Race Massacre. As many as 300 black people were killed by groups of white people. Many black-owned businesses were also destroyed. All right, this is important in that it happened and it's really terrible and one of the things we had to define is what a massacre is so that's when a lot of people are killed indiscriminately this piece of information doesn't really tell us anything about juneteenth as much as it tells us why tulsa would not be a good choice for trump Ann green is a historian and writer she was unhappy about trump's plan that day is the day those people in Texas found out they were free. Again, talking about why Juneteenth is so important. So I highlighted that as relevant and bold. And she is a historian, which means that she is probably a good source. All right. On June 12th, Trump announced that he would be rescheduling his rally to June 20th. So he made the decision to not have it on Juneteenth. When Barack Obama was president, he had a painting in the White House. 
It showed enslaved people waiting for Lincoln's order, the Emancipation Proclamation, to start. Then they would be free. Obama said the enslaved people in Galveston had to wait longer to hear that they were free at last. I made this pink as related, right? He's a former president. If I wanted to use that in a quote in my argument, that would be a powerful quote to use. Okay, so let's go back through and look at the author's claim again. Juneteenth should be declared a national holiday, similar to the 4th of July, Labor and Memorial Day, because it marks the day that all slaves in the United States knew they were free and that the Emancipation Proclamation would be followed. Okay, a national holiday. 4th of July would be a national holiday. It's a really important event where we celebrate our independence. So the, the author is saying Juneteenth would also be a date that we should celebrate. So you can decide for yourself whether you think the author has made a good case. However, what pieces of evidence do you think support her case that Juneteenth should be a national holiday? Is it that millions of blacks were enslaved? That's a big number. They were all across the United States. So if it's a national holiday and it happened all across the nation, that would support her argument. That June the 19th, in fact, was when the last order was read in Texas. That could be a good supporting piece of information for her argument. That they finally got their freedom on that day that they knew about it, again, supports her argument. And then finally, as the historian says, that is the day people in Texas found out they were actually free. So you decide at this point for yourself whether you think Juneteenth should be a national holiday. But as you go out of this video and you're going to go do the exit slip, I want you to think about this author's claim. Not whether you agree with her or not, but whether or not what evidence she picked out of here that supports the fact that Juneteenth should be a national, national holiday. That's what you're going to do for your exit slip. And we'll keep working on these uh, claims and reasoning and all of that as we move through the year. They do get more difficult, but this is a good starting point. So take a minute to think about which piece of evidence you think is the strongest and then go do the exit slip when you're ready. Have a great day.